Phil Bedford and welcome to this week's show. Today, I'm back in Dubai and I'm privileged to have with me today David Averin. David, welcome. Thank you, sir. Welcome nice to see back you. to Dubai. It, it's, it's a great place to be. I, uh, it's one of my favorite cities in the world. I travel the world, speaking marketing, customer experience, and I love any opportunity to be back in this magnificent city. Okay, good, good. And uh, David, uh, you are the author of Visibility Marketing and numerous other books, but you're actually in the region for a different reason. What is that? We're here talking customer experience. You know, uh, you and I both are, are in the marketing world, but, but so often we see organizations, they may be great with the messaging, but if they aren't living up to it, if, if, if the customer experience, if, if they're difficult to do business with, if they're difficult to get a hold of a real person, um, I've, I've come to recognize so many ways that businesses are really frustrating customers. Um, and, and my new book is, is called Why Customers Leave. That'll be out later on this spring, Why Customers Leave and, and How to Win Them Back. And I detail in that and in my presentations and my training but some of the ways that organizations, I think, are inadvertently driving people away in their effort to be um, to to standardize the kinds of things that they do in their organization, to be very efficient with what they do, sometimes they lose the humanity part of it. And we're here helping companies recognize how they might be doing that. So uh, um, as I'm listening to you now, a statistic jumps into my mind, and I don't know if I'm 100 percent right on sure. this. Um, I think it's like 64, 68 percent of clients leave because they think we don't care. Right. But, but you know, I, I think it's true in a lot of ways um, because I think there's a, a lack of a, of a personal interaction. I mean, some of the online transactions, there are no personal and, and it's designed that way. But I think it goes beyond that. I think there's things that organizations are doing in the interest of, of efficiency, of expediency, of, of predictability, mm. that they're taking decision making away from their frontline people. They don't want, they're so afraid that people are going to make a bad decision mm. that they don't let them make any decision. And mm. what that does is it takes away the opportunity for organizations to, to customize that experience. Not everything that a customer wants to do or a client wants to do fits within the scenarios that they've already created in their mind. The standard scenario, it might be 90% of the time, but what about that person that wants a different color, that person that wants a, a late checkout, who wants to reach a real person for crying out loud. Mm -hmm. And instead what we do as organizations, we put up contact forms on our websites because that's how we want people to contact. Well, they want to reach a real person. They get frustrated. Mm -hmm. um, I, one of the things I talk about on stage and working with my clients is, is the reality that the greatest source of lost revenue for an, for an organization, it's not inefficiency, it's not a bad supply chain, it's not even expensive employees. The greatest source of lost revenue is the customer, the client, the prospect that you never knew about, mm. right? They drove by and they didn't stop or they called on the phone and they hung up because they got frustrated by the voicemail system. They, um, they came in, they turned around and left without being engaged mm. or, or what's happening more and more is they went to your website and they clicked away without buying anything, without leaving information. And the worst part is that they have no idea who those people were or how many people there were. And so part of my message, part of my mantra, part of my mission is to help organizations recognize my book. I detail 23 different ways that people drive away prospects that they never even realize it. And it's not because they're being mean. It's not because they're being intentionally being impersonal. They're just trying to be efficient and in doing and predictable. And in doing so, they're losing an opportunity to be human. Mm. And, and we, we know it, we recognize it mm. and we vote with our dollars and we vote with our feet. Yeah. I, lo I love what you're saying. I think, um, yeah, efficiency is kind of destroying the human element. And what I'm hearing is that's driving people away. So you're actually in the region for a while. Where, where will you be? And I believe you're here with Right Selection. Is that right? I'm here with Right yeah, Selection, yeah. A, a phenomenal job of, of representing me, working with clients. We're doing a, a seminar uh, this afternoon, public seminar. Um, and then I'm in Oman on Tuesday, and we're doing a full day customer experience um, session for business owners and entrepreneurs and others. And we're going to take them through. Uh, exercises and, and interactive um, experiences and a lot of lessons and of course when I present it's it's very there's a lot of humor there's a lot of storytelling but I use that strategically to temper a pretty tough message mm -hmm. about what it takes to compete today because arguably for the first time in history everybody's good everybody's good at least good enough sometimes good enough at a better price point is a better choice so we've really never experienced that. You know, when, when we grew up, 
you could compete on, on quality. Somebody could be faster. Somebody could be closer. Uh, you have to be good at all of those things today because there are others who are. So it's, it's oftentimes great for the consumer. It's very challenging for business owners because consumers, whether it's a, a B2B or a B2C um, dynamic, have our expectations have changed. We want what we want. We want it when we want it. And by and large, we can get it. And if you can't deliver it, somebody else will. So it's kind of what I'm hearing there is, is I think business is becoming so efficient. That it's almost like the deciding factor now is how people feel. Well, absolutely. Because everybody can deliver it. The question is, can you as an organization, can you as a business, can you deliver it more memorably, more personalized, more um, expediently, quicker, faster? Mm -hmm. There has to be some reason to choose you over everybody else that's good. Um, I still see company leaders, CEOs get in front of their teams and they're saying, listen, folks, at the end of the day, it's about quality. And, and I couldn't disagree more. Mm -hmm. I think at the beginning of the day, it's about mm -hmm. quality. You better be good at what you do. But at the end of the day, it's about competitive advantage. What do you do differently or better or faster or friendlier or more personalized that makes you a better choice than the other good choices? And even to the extent that not only is it, is, is it great, and I think we talked about this earlier about, about great for retention, retaining your customers, but are you so good that it would actually cost somebody to talk about you to someone else. That word of mouth, that's hard. Mm. Because being really, really good at what you do today, being really good, that's the entry fee. That gives you permission to do business in the marketplace. So companies are scrambling. And, and I think some of the, the poor messaging out there is organizations will talk about some really unique experience that somebody had where somebody went above and beyond and did something. Else. That's great, but it's fleeting. Mm. What's really meaningful is what do you do every time? Mm. What do you do? Your customer service is the interaction that your employees have at the front line, but the experience is something that's designed and envisioned and crafted and delivered by the organization. This is how we do what we do at every point of contact, whether it's on the phone, right, on the app, whether it's in person, whether it's on the computer screen. The company has to make that decision, and that comes from, and the work that I do with organizations is help them evaluate every point of contact. Is that the way it should be done? Mm. And in most cases, the answer is yes, because businesses are very good at this. Mm. But there's always something. Mm. Is there something that, that people traditionally dislike about doing business with an mm. industry or a sector? Can we enhance that point of contact? Can we, can we make it faster? Can we make it more personalized? Can we give them an opportunity to do something different? And then are we actually asking people to share these positive experiences? Some of the best organizations are encouraging and, and incentivizing the sharing of positive information. Mm. Um, I, I've seen in America, I've seen restaurants that have selfie sticks in the middle of the table. Like, <laughs> like they're just there basically telling people, if you're having a great time, take a video and share it. Mm. We used to share in the, in the restaurant, there was a bulletin board with all the photographs, right? And so, well, now that, 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 that bulletin board is Instagram, uh -huh. right? And, and it's Facebook and it's LinkedIn. And so it's not just helping organizations identify the reasons that people leave, but help them design experiences that are so good that they're worthy of being shared. And that's what I do. And that's what I'm here in, in the Middle East doing. And, uh, and I've done in 24 countries around the world. I'm really, really lucky to do what I do. David, thank you so much. Good luck for this afternoon. Thank well, you, I'm sir. sure you don't need it. But thank you. There you go. Absolute Looking forward pleasure. to it. Thanks for having me. So, Rebel Networker.